When I revealed the existence of Quincy Jones' sex rings in Hollywood, it caused some individuals to scratch their heads. And the folks he invited in. You'll let me know if I'm lying, too. Kevin Campbell, walking along Hollywood Boulevard with his little beautiful ass. How does a young man with such a voice, who might have easily been one of the greatest male vocalists of all time, with the records he had, end up prostitution for drugs? People have long pondered how someone with Tevin Campbell's skill could have lost his way and been unable to climb back to his former heights. And it appears that his association with Quincy Jones, the same man who made him famous, was what ultimately led to his demise. Sex is prevalent among those he attracted to Hollywood. Tell me if I'm lying, if you'll... Professor Griff, a well-known Hollywood producer, made the initial accusations that Tevin was one of the young talents Quincy was recruiting to become sex workers. Jaguar Wright, who said that Tevin was forced to sell himself for drugs on Hollywood Boulevard and that he was coerced into it by... Well, Quincy Jones also connected Quincy and Tevin. In true Jaguar, right fashion, she felt the need to out celebrities. And so she decided to offer up some information about Tevin Campbell's past escapades, claiming that the 90s musician ended up selling himself for drugs on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, let's not forget the type of person Jaguar is. And this isn't the first time that she caught herself publicly outing business that wasn't hers and can't be confirmed. But for all the rumors she talked about, no other artist has acknowledged her. Except for Campbell, as he took to Twitter to push back against her claim, he wrote on Twitter, According to it, Jaguar Wright, I was a sex worker on Hollywood Bell Eft. It's called online defamation. Do not test driven. My lawyer is on deck. If I were you, I'd remove that YouTube video. Jaguar said on a live that she had seen Tevin's tweet threatening to sue her, and that she didn't really care because that was the truth for her. She did, however, have a grain of truth when she said that Tevin is a gifted musician and singer, and as such, should never have lost his place in the music world. If you've ever turned on the radio or attended a school dance after the 1990s, you've probably heard of Tevin Campbell, or at least heard his voice. Tevin's love of singing began at an early age, and he refined his singing in Texas gospel choruses. And in the late 1980s, a family friend connected him to jazz flutist Bobby Humphrey, who later pitched him to Warner Brothers' upper management. After meeting Benny Medina, an industry legend, as a result of this introduction, Tevin's career was established. Being Tomorrow a Better You and Me, a song from Quincy Jones' Back on the Block Ensemble LP, was his first release, and it helped him establish a name for himself by collaborating with a few of luminaries. The young artist must have encountered Quincy for the first time at this point, and that song immediately gained enormous popularity. When he first met Quincy, he had just turned 14, and his career was already thriving. Big artists have mentioned him, and everyone has admired his singing. Back on the block, Quincy's record would go on to win the Grammy for Album of the Year, helped in part by the track which for a while became a staple in high school graduation ceremonies, adolescent talent showcases, and church youth chorus all over the country. Obviously, with such a strong beginning. By the time Campbell was 18 years old, just three voices were permitted to vamp out in the top 15 Billboard Hot 100 songs, and his next collaboration would be with none other than Prince. D'Angelo wrote the sole charity record you will know for Black Men United in 1994. The group's members at the time included Stokely Williams, Brian McKnight, and an 18-year-old Tevin Campbell. Everyone from Usher and Gerald Levert to El Deberge and Lenny Kravitz participated in the song. Young Campbell was frequently described to as the masculine Whitney Houston of his time due to his four-and-a-half-octave range. Campbell was asked to kill Houston style on the 1,996 Olympic CD for the impossible dream at the young age of 20. Campbell also lost the five Grammy Awards he was nominated for before turning 20 to artists, including Luther Vandross, Al Jarreau, Ray Charles Babyface, 
and peak boys to two men, people that have records that are so creative. Besides selling more than three million albums throughout this time, alongside actors like Will Smith and Brandy, Campbell also appeared in comedy and police dramas. It wasn't until 1999 when Campbell, then 22 years old, was arrested for asking an undercover police officer for oral sex and then having a catastrophic forced outing afterward. Interview with Jamie Foster Brown, whose career as an Alister came to an end in 2003, appeared in Sister 2 Sister magazine. John King he changed from being a golden kid to simply another R&B artist of the 1990s because he was gay, which at the time was bad for hip-hop. He would respond with whenever someone inquired about his sexual orientation. Alongside celebrities like Brandy and Will Smith, Campbell also appeared in comedy and police dramas. Not until Campbell, then 22 years old, was arrested in 1999 for asking an undercover police officer for oral sex and was then forced to go on a catastrophic forced excursion. When Jamie Foster Brown's time as an enlister came to an end, an interview with him appeared in Sister Two Sister magazine in 2003. King, Mr. He changed from being a golden kid to just another 90 SR and B singer because he was gay. Which was bad for hip hop at the time. When questioned about his sexual orientation, he always responded with strange mixture of defensiveness, denials, obfuscation, and industry cliches about it being private and I enjoy giving the reader a little leeway. And he didn't actually come out as gay until lately. Years after a career in the spotlight marked by massive chart songs, acclaimed Broadway productions, and a cherished song in a 90s Disney classic, R&B musician Teven Campbell, let his fans in on an aspect of his private life that he had previously avoided in a recent interview on The People. Everyday Podcast In the podcast, Campbell acknowledged that he is gay and reflected on the events that led to his decision to come out to his audience, saying, he added on the show, What makes me happiest right now is how far I've come in life. Many child stars fail to succeed. But many of us succeed, as evidenced by the fact that I have accepted myself. Campbell admitted that he never really tried to hide his identity from others around him throughout his formative years in the business. He was aware that at the time, homosexuality was not common. He asserted that it wasn't until he played the role of Seaweed J. Stubbs in the Broadway production of Hairspray in 2005, one more stated. In 1999, Tevin Campbell entered a no-contest plea to ask a male undercover cop for prostitution. What, in your opinion, happened to Tevin Campbell's illustrious career? How did he wind up selling himself? And was Quincy Jones somehow involved? Please share your thoughts in the comments area. This video is based on my beliefs and opinions and shouldn't be taken as reality. This concludes the video. Bye.